Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at today is going to be section 13.2 in your book. So we're done with um, we're done with chapter 10 where we're doing graph theory. And now we're into chapter 13, skipping ahead. Um, now, this is 13.2 and not 13.1. 13.1 uh, is actually an, another topic, uh, languages and grammars, that um, I think is less interesting and um, not required for us to do. So we're skipping it and we're going straight to 13.2, finite state machines. Uh, finite state machines are very useful um, and understanding them will really help your programming in um, a variety of fields, which you'll see um, momentarily. So I'm going to give you the definition um, first, and then we're going to talk about what these things mean. So this is going to be a definition of a finite state machine. So definition, a finite state machine is a machine with finite states. That's actually it, but uh, <laughs> you know, we need a little bit longer description than that. So a finite state machine, I don't like that line, um, which we can write this way m equals so m for a machine and then it's a bunch of parts and the parts are s i o f g you probably won't see them written you know quite like this very often but uh, each of those things is part of the the state machine that you need so it is a finite state machine consists of oops consists of what? Well, first of all, there's S. So what's the S? The S is a set of states that the machine can be in, which I should say finite states or a finite set of states. Okay, fine. A finite set of states that the machine can be in. So um, to help you think about this, I'll give you an example. So uh, let's say you're writing like a very simple video game. Um, and in that video game, you've got, um, you know, a little guy. Right, and that's an enemy. So like you have a player maybe, and then you have an enemy. And the enemy, you need to control the enemy with some sort of rudimentary uh, AI. And so, you know, maybe, maybe the enemy has uh, a weapon, right? That's a sword. Okay, it's a, it's a big knife can stab the player. Okay, now, um, the enemy isn't probably always just running straight at the player, trying to murder him, right? They could be um, trying to murder the player, but they're probably not always doing that, right? They, so the enemy um, probably has a certain number of states. So those states could be something like idle, where they're just kind of standing around and playing an idle um, animation or something. Uh, then if they hear a sound, Maybe they have a state that's like searching where they're walking around looking for the player. Um, and if they find the player, maybe uh, they go into attack mode and they attack the player, right? And uh, you would have rules for switching between these, right? Like if you're in the idle state and you hear a sound, then you turn into uh, searching. And if you see the player, then you attack and if the player runs away so you can't see them anymore then maybe you go back to searching and if you search for a while and you don't see the player maybe you go back to idle right so you can be idle searching or attacking and then you can switch between all of these using some kind of rule and that's the sort of thing that you would use a finite state machine for where you list out the states and uh you know you can switch between them and you have the rules for that and that's all we're really talking about here um we're talking about a, a finite state machine is uh some sort of mathematical object or a programming object where you've got um different states 
that the object can be in and you need to have rules for how to switch back and forth between them. And so uh, the way you start out with this is with S, your list of states, right? So we just actually listed them here for an example. We're not really gonna keep using that example, but I just wanted to write that. Then you've got I. So what's I? Well, I is going to be your inputs, right? What is going to, what information do you need in order to be able to switch between the states? So like I said, um, in this example, right? Maybe I will continue it a little bit. Um, so you had your, oops, undo. I was not planning to use like an example at this point, but uh, it doesn't hurt. So let me just actually come in here and erase this. And um, we somehow block this off a little bit. Hold on, that over down here, that. Okay, so you have states like that. And um, then maybe you have your inputs. Your inputs would be anything that you need um, in order to tell you how to change your uh, state. So like, for example, I said that we should, um, maybe we should go from idle to searching if you hear a sound, right? So that means the enemy needs to know if it heard a sound. So you would have like maybe uh, heard a sound. That could be like a like a Boolean, like true or false. Did you just hear a sound? Um, what other input might you need? Well, you, if you're going to attack the player, you attack the player when you see the player is what I said. So you would need to uh, and see the player. You would need to know that. And then I said that also probably you would need to know like a time because like you search for a while and like if you're attacking, you can't see the player. So now you're searching, uh, you search for a while and then maybe you go back to idle. You would need to know how long it's been since you've seen the player. So maybe you have uh, time since player was seen. I should not put that that low, right? And maybe that's your inputs. And of course you put whatever you need there, but um, it's just a list of things. Um, so these are gonna be what you need to make decisions. So this would be, they say, a finite input, they call it an alphabet, I. Um, but it's just a list of the inputs to the function, basically, or to a function. O, that's going to be outputs. Um, that would be if outputs are kind of um, actions that the finite state machine needs to take. Okay, so... Um, here where you have like idle searching and attacking, those are the states, but then what's happening? Like, what does that mean? Like, what are you, what are you actually gonna be doing? Um, so those are, they're kind of actions that need to be taken. Um, but again, it's also gonna be a finite uh, alphabet or output alphabet. Oh. And, you know, if you're worried about the rule, like the words alphabet there, they're from section 13.1, but we don't really need to know what they are. You'll see that it's not necessary to have a precise definition of those for anything. All right. So we have SIO. Now, um, then what we need is we're going to have a function. So little f and little g are functions. So what little f is, is it's going to be the rule basically to tell you how to how to uh, change between idle searching and attacking, for example. So what's the rule, right? Like I, I explained some of the rule, but the actual rule is what F is. So F is what they call a transition function. Say uh, a transition function that assigns each input, um, each state, so you have to know what state you're in and each input, each state and input uh, into um, a new state. 
I should say, I, I, I left out a word there. Assigned. I left out the word assigned. Let me move this. So a transition function that assigns each state and input uh, to a new state, right? So that's going to be how you get from idle to searching. How do you get from searching to attacking? How do you get from attacking to searching? Can you go from attacking to idle? Maybe. What, um, but what's the rule, right? And so this is the rule for how to do that. Um, and then you need another function. And it's the same kind of idea, but that covers outputs which I haven't really defined outputs for this function, I see, but um, you know, you can think of those as, you know, other than state transitions, what does this mean? Like, it's going to be like, um, trying to think. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what they would be for this, you know, actually swinging the sword or whatever it is, calling a function that makes it do something, but I'm not going to put an output there. Uh, so let's see here, a transition function. No, it's not actually a transition function, output function. So an output function, uh, G, uh, well, we already said that, that assigns each state and input. So same, same information that assigns uh, each state and input. Um, to an output. So I O F G, and then there's one more, which I left off here. Let me go back up and erase this. That's not. So there's one more thing that's supposed to be in there. And that last thing is just the starting state, right? When you start the finite state machine, what, what state are you in? So the starting state, or they call it the initial state. And usually if you're calling your states like S0, S1, S2, S3, S4, etc., cetera, then um, usually they just make sure that they, whatever they want the initial state to be, they call that F0 and then, you know, they don't have to, Think hard about it. What's the initial state? Call it S0. Um, doesn't matter. All right, so we got bigger marker O I F G uh, S. Okay, so um, that's that's what a finite state machine is. And um, in order to you know really understand these things, we're going to work our way. Um, through an example. And so uh, it's a pretty long example. I should say too that there's a typed up version of the of these notes where this is all typed and printed nicely for you. Um, so I'll just comment on that. This example, the following example is uh, in the typed up notes as well. Um, it's also in the book. All right. So here's, here's the example. So the example is going to be the vending machine example. And, uh, so they give us a wall of text, which I'm going to write. I'm not just going to copy paste it. Um, because I want to talk about it as we go. So the vending machine example. So what is it? So. Um, here it is. Where is it? Oh, okay, there we go. There it is. So, uh, here's the specification for it. Okay. So they say, uh, we have a vending machine. Uh, takes, it accepts, uh, nickels which are five cents, of course, uh, dimes, which of course are 10 cents and quarters, 
which are 25 cents. All right, so you can put in money, you put in coins. Um, now, when you have 30 or more cents, right? So like if you put in two quarters, you're gonna have 30 cents, more than 30 cents, okay? So if you have 30 or more, then we're actually going to spit out um, anything more, more than 30 to get down to 30. So if um, when uh, 30 or more uh, cents have been deposited, um, the machine immediately returns anything over 30 cents which you know it would have to have it would have to have the coins in reserve right like if you put in two quarters that's 50 cents it needs to return 20 cents so it has to return two dimes even though you put in two quarters so it's going to have to have some money just to be able to use for change right that's why vending machines have like insert exact change lights or they used to all right so anyway 30 or more cents have been deposited the machine immediately um, uh, returns or refunds not returns because it might not be your money um anything over 30 cents okay And um, when 30 cents is in the machine, you can purchase something for 30 cents. So when 30 cents is in the machine and any refunds have happened, then what you can do is you can press one of two buttons. The customer and press an orange button and receive an orange juice. Or a what do they call it? Red button, I think. Or a red button. and receive apple juice. Why did I just misspell receive twice? That's weird. Okay, so that is how it works. Okay, I think that's everything that we need. Um, also, of course, when you do that, then your your money gets sent back to zero. Um, so this is the description of the problem. It's not in the um, the finite state machine uh, formula yet. So. The way we're going to make this a finite state machine is we're going to write out what all of these things should be. We need the S, the I, the O, the F, the G, the S. And okay, um, so let's go through these things one by one. So let us get a color here. And um, so let's figure out our finite state machine. So our uh, machine. What's it look like? So we have a set of states. Now, um, the states are basically going to be how much money is currently in the machine. So um, we could have zero cents, five cents, ten cents, twenty cents, like all like we could have any amount of money in the machine. So the machine doesn't take like pennies, so it's always in five um, increments of five. So you could have like five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25 30 um and there could be more money but we don't need to keep track of anything more 
because if you go over 30, we immediately refund it, right? So if um, when you have more than 30 cents, uh, we immediately refund it. So we don't have to keep track of anything over 30, basically. Okay. So like if you put in 50 cents, it should immediately give you back 20. And then you're just sitting at 30. So we don't need anything past 30. Okay. Now that's a decision. We could have, we could have had the ability to put in, you know, more money and then maybe bought two things or something, but we didn't. This is just a decision. Okay. So we're making the decision that we have this amount of money can be in the machine. Of course, also there was zero should have been allowed, right? No money in the machine. So what are those states? So we're just going to call them S zero for zero cents. Um, S one will be five. Um, and then we're just going to continue on this pattern here. Okay. So, uh, S two for 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So those are, those are, are going to be our states. And, um, again, that's how much money is going to be in the machine. So the way the book writes it is they say S I, um, where, uh, the states are as I, where, um, five I cents are in the machine. Right. That's, that's the pattern. Uh, like if it's a zero, five times zero is zero, five times one is five, like five times four is 20, you know, five times six is 30 and so on. So you don't really need to say this as long as you, you know, understood what the, like what the mapping was between cents in the machine and the actual names of the state. Okay. Uh, and, you know, maybe we should have just called the states you know, S0, S5, S10, S15, S20, S25, S30, we could have done that. Maybe that would have been easier, but we didn't. This is what we did. We're matching the book. Okay. So those are our states. So of course you need these states in order to find the site, in order to write out the finite state machine. What's next? So the next is we need our I, our inputs. Now, what are the inputs? Well, the inputs are whatever information you need in order to figure out what state to go to uh, and what to output. So for this vending machine, what are the inputs? Well, well, the inputs are literally inputs, right? Like, because you can accept money, nickels, dimes, quarters, right? Nickels, dimes, and quarters, those are inputs. We need to know how much money you're putting in but also down here, the buttons are inputs, right? Anything like any information you need in order to figure out what to do is an input, right? And so we got to know if the button's being pressed. Otherwise, how would we, how would we deposit? How would we give the user their orange juice if we don't know about the orange button, right? So that's also an input. So money are like literally being input into the machine, but also the buttons are input from the user. So what do we do? So the inputs are, we can just say like five cents, that's a nickel, 10 cents, that's a dime, 25 cents, that's a quarter. Oh, that'll be the orange button. And R, that will be the red button, right? So you got your buttons. and your money. We need to know both. Um, in order to um, in order to to make decisions. Okay, so what's next? Now we need to know about outputs. So your outputs. Um, that's uh, O different O than the orange button, but what can we output? Well, there we output two different kinds of things. 
So we output money and we output juice, right? So if for your outputs, we know that we actually have like uh, orange juice is one of the outputs. Apple juice is one of the outputs. Um, but also um, we need to refund money, right? Uh, in certain cases, we need to give the, the user their money back. And so how much money would we need to give back? Um, and if you work it out, um, what you'll see is like, um, so 30, like 30 cents is the cap, right? 30 cent cap, Not, um, that's how much money you can have. So if you go up to 35, then we would need to give back five cents, right? To get down to 30. And if you got up to 40 cents, then we would need to return 10 cents. And if you went to 45 cents, then we would need to refund 15. And if you went to 50 cents, then we would need to refund uh, 20. And if you went to 55 cents, then you would need to return uh, 25, I think. And if you went up to 60, Oh, actually, 60 is not even possible, right? Because how would you get to 60 cents if you're putting in coins, right? If you were, if the most amount in the machine is 30, and if you were at 30 and you added a quarter, you would be at 55, right? So you can't get over 55 unless you have a coin that's bigger than a quarter, so you'd have to have a coin bigger than a quarter in order to get above um, above 55. So we don't need a 60. We don't need to consider that case where there's 60, which means we don't need to return any more than 25 cents. That's the most we would have to ever return. Okay. Um, all right. So those are your outputs. Um, then what's next? Then what we need is, I think we need the functions, right? Um, so the, the functions that tell you how to change from uh, state to state and a function that tells you um, what the output is, okay? And so in order to do that, we make a thing that we call a state table, okay? So for the rest of this, let me just cover this, inputs, Outputs, stay this, this was, you know, possible uh, amounts to return. And also we um, give the customer juice. All right, so, um, those are the outputs. We need the functions now. Um, so F and G are where all the details are. F and G uh, are functions mapping the inputs and the current state to outputs and new states. Okay, and so in this case, they're actually pretty complicated. We can't just we can't just write them all down, or sorry, we we can just write them all down, but we can't just write them on like one single line or something like that. Uh, to organize them, we use uh, a state table. Organize um, this. We use a state table or a state diagram but we're gonna use a state table first. Okay, so we're gonna make a state table. So what, what is a state table? So this is a state table. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Oops, nope, that is not what we want. Go blue. Line all the way across, we probably need it. Um, and what are we gonna need? All right, so first thing you're gonna have is you're gonna have 
your states. So this is basically your um, current state. They don't write the word current in the um, when you look it up on the computer, but um, this is where we're going to put the current state. So what are the what are the possible states? That's what goes right here. So you just say uh, S0, um, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6. All right. So those are my states. Now, um, what we need to know is what are your inputs that are possible? So your inputs, which we have, um, you can input only these things, five cents, 10 cents, 25 cent coins, or you can press the buttons. So those are your possible inputs. Those go here and also here. The reason we're gonna write them twice is we're gonna have in this one table, you basically have a table for F, and you have a table for G, right? F and G are separate functions, but we want to draw them on the same table um, just to keep it concise. So, concise. so this is where we're going to calculate your next state, which means that this is the, um, which function does that? The function F does that. So um, what you need to know are your inputs. What are your inputs? So your inputs are, uh, we can put, let's see here, I'm trying to decide how many boxes to, to reserve. You can input five. I think it's the word, hold on. You can input 10. That's great. Uh, you can input 25 cents. Why, why is that longer? And then you have your buttons and your buttons are the orange button. <laughs> Straight lines are so hard. And you can do a red button as well. All right. So let me do this again. So we're going to need all the same things. So call that five. 10, 25, orange button, red button. Okay, so there we go. So 5, 10, 25, orange, and red. And so this is going to be um, not the, um, this is going to be the output, which means that this is the function g and uh but these are just the inputs still okay so um you've got the inputs up here twice like i said um this is basically now chopped in half right so on the left maybe to make a bigger even a bigger line here Right, so on the left is your F and on the right is your G. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so what's going on here is you're going to put your function F here by just saying what happens in each case. So like, for example, um, right here, what's gonna happen right here? So. If you look, this is when the current state is S0, so no money in there, and you deposit five cents. So if you have no money and you deposit five cents, what should happen? You should go to a new state. You should go to the state where you have five cents, right? So um, example, that's too way too thick. Um, erase, erase. Example. So if the current state is, um, you know, zero cents, S0, which is zero cents, and the input is five cents, you put in nickel, then the new state, what should the new state be? Well, the new state is whatever you should go to. So your, your states are here, 
right? S0, S1, S2, S3, S4. So if you put in five cents, you should go to state one because state one is five cents, right? So the new state would be S, oops. Come on now, work. S1. S1 because that's five cents. Wrote that different. Oh, I see what I did. Oh, it should have been lining them up like this. Oh, complicated. Rewriting this. So current state and the input was five cents. Then the uh, new state should be S1 because that's five cents going from zero to five. And the output, what would the output be? So the output, remember the output is just refunds. The output is just refunds and juice. So if the machine has zero cents and you put in a nickel, there is no output, right? You don't get a refund, you don't get a refund and you don't get any juice. So the output is none. Does that make sense? And so where this information goes up here is just in that in these boxes. So um, we've got one. What? Why is it so hard? So you got one box right there. That's for S0 and 5. S0 and 5. Also, this is 5, right? Because there's two copies here. So you just put in the numbers. So if you're at S0 and you put in 5 cents, the new state is S1. And if you're in S0 and you put in 5, your new state is S1 and the output is none which we're going to write over here just by none. You also could have added that to the list here for your outputs. You could have just like put nothing. Um, actually, yeah. So um, they actually do that in, when they wrote their example. So let, let me do that as well. And this is for nothing. So we'll put an in if nothing is output. Okay. Um, and then what you have to do is just keep going. You know, we filled in one box, right? So because these are, well, we, we can fill them out either kind of going across or going down, whichever way is convenient. Um, I think we'll just go across maybe. So um, how are we going to do this? So right here, this would be if you were the current state was S zero and you put in a, a dime, so 10 cents. So what would your new state be, right? What would your new state be S what, what state is 10 cents? 10 cents is S two. So you would be an S two and Right here, if you're in S0 and you put in a 10 cents, a 10 cents, if you put in a dime, uh, what does the machine output? And the answer is nothing, right? The only time you're gonna have outputs are gonna be way down here, right? Because like S5 and S6, like those are 25 cents and 30 cents already in. So you have to have 30 cents to output juice. So there's no juice except in the last row. And then S5 is when you have 25 cents. And if you have 25 cents and you put in some money, you're probably getting a refund. So um, down here is where you're actually going to have outputs that are not none. Up here, you know, you don't have enough money for a refund or to buy anything. All right, let's keep going. So. If you're in S0, zero cents, and you put in 25, what state do you end up in? Well, you end up in the state where 25 cents, you have 25 cents. That is, S5 is when you have 25 cents. Okay. Now, if you are in S0 and you put in 25 cents, what do you output? Nothing. Right? Again. 
okay, if you're in F0, so you have no money, so you just walk up to the vending machine with no money and you press the orange button, what state are you in? What's your new state? The answer is S0, right? Because you didn't put in any money. If there's no money and you press the orange button, you don't get money, you stay in state zero, no money. Same thing for the other button. Now, what about if you press the buttons uh, in terms of output? So there's no money in the machine and you press the orange button or the red button. Nothing happens, nothing happens, okay? And then we just move to the next row. So the next row is, what if we have five cents in the machine, right? Remember, we, we have these, um, so this is five, that's readable font. Like, remember that's five, that's 10, that's 15, that's 20, that's 25, that's 30. Okay, so um, pink again or a different color? I don't know, let's do this, alternate. Um, so for right here, you're in S1, so you have five cents and you put in five cents. So if you're at five and you put in five, you should have 10 and 10 we know is S2. S2. Now, if you have five cents currently and you put in 10, what should you be here? You should have 15, right? Which is S3. So this is an S3. Now I could go and I could fill these out. It doesn't really matter. Like, do you want to fill these out and then these or all of this and all of this or one and one, it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, we could just fill the ones out now that we did. Um, right. Uh, either way you end up at five, you end up at 10 or you end up at 15. What does the machine output? Of course it outputs nothing, right? Nothing, nothing. We don't have enough money in the machine yet. Okay, what about here? If you're at five and you put in 25. So if you're at five and you put in 25, you end up at 30, which is state six. Cool. Now what's the machine output? Nothing, right? You get up to 30 cents, but we haven't pressed the button yet. And we're not, there's nothing to refund. So nothing. All right, what about? this. You're at five and you press the orange button. You're at five and you press the red button. Well, nothing's changing, right? You're not putting in any money. So you're staying at S1, right? So we started at S1 and we stayed at S1, right? Pressing the button when you don't have enough money doesn't do anything. Definitely also does not output anything. All right, cool. Next row. So next row. I think we'll actually have our first uh, output here somewhere in this row. So we're at 10 cents now, state two. We're at state two and you put in five. That goes up to 15. 15 is S3. Okay. What gets output? Nothing. Oh, I was gonna switch colors again. I was gonna alternate to make it easier to read. Okay. Um, so you're at 10 cents and you put in 10 cents, you'd be at 20, 20 is S4, so S4, nothing gets output. Okay. If you're at 10 and you put in 25, all right, so this is, this is where you have to do a little bit of thinking. What happens if you're at 10 and you put in 25, you're at 35, right? You're at 35 cents but the machine does not have a state for 35 cents. The machine tops out at 30. So what happens when you get 35, right? 10 plus 25 is that the machine goes to S6, which is 30 cents, but we also have to refund five cents. And so when you look over here for the output, that's where we're gonna have an output of five cents. So you put in, if you add, you put in 35 cents, it should immediately return five cents. That's why that's an output. Okay, I'm gonna write this one down. I'll pick a color here like uh, green, green, green. Um, 
what's the green. Uh, so like if the current state is S2, which was 10 cents, um, and the input is, uh, what was it, 25, then the output, or the new state, sorry, should be S6, which is 30 cents, but then you should output five cents because that way you're actually refunding the extra, right? 10 plus 25 is 35, 30 stays in the machine and the and the customer gets five back and that's your output. Okay, so that's, that's what's going on there. All right, let's keep going. So if you're at 10 and you press the buttons, um, nothing happens, so stay in state two. Nothing happened, so nothing happens. All right, next row, S3. So your S3 got 15 cents, you put in five. If you're at 20, which is S4, right? And there are patterns here, by the way, right? Just to mention them, right? Like this is going S1, S2, S3, S4. You can fill those out. Uh, these are going S2, S3, S4, right? So this is probably S5, that kind of thing. Um, these are already up, it went S5, S6. The rest of these are going to be S6, right? If you're at, th like, anytime you go over 30 cents, you're just going to stay 30 cents. So, like, if you recognize this, you can fill out this whole row or this whole column right away. But uh, we're going slower to explain it all. Uh, all right. So you're you're at fifth or you're at fifteen, and you put in ten. So you're at twenty five, which is S five. Um, either way, on both of these, you haven't had enough money. You haven't had thirty cents in yet. So nothing output. Uh, middle one here. You're at fifteen, and you put in twenty five. So you're at fifteen, and you put in twenty five. That takes you up to forty cents but you stay at 30 cents as six and you have to refund 10, right? If you go up to 40, you return, you refund 10 and stay at 30 cents. Okay. Now here we got uh, 15 cents. If you got 15 cents and you press the buttons, you stay at 15 cents and the machine doesn't return anything. All right, next one, 20 cents. So you're at uh, you're at 20 cents and you put in five. At 20, put in five, you're at 25, which is S5. Um, you don't have enough money yet, yeah, so nothing happens. Uh, if you're at 20 and you put in 10, you're gonna be at 30, which is S6. Uh, nothing is output because you're at exactly 30, right? 20 plus 10 is 30. No refund. Uh, this one's going to be a refund. So if you're at 20 and you put in 25, you end up with 45 cents. 45 cents would mean that you have to return 15, which I'll put over here right away. And you're going to go up to S6, which is, you know, full 30 cents. Next one, you're at 20 and you press the button. 20 cents isn't enough to buy anything, so nothing happened. You stay at S4, and nothing is output. All right, next row. Oops. So you're at, what happened? Oh, I erased this. All right, so you're at 25. You're at 25, and you put in 5. You're going to end up at S6. Um, no output, because we're at exactly 30. Then you're at 25 and you put in 10. Then in that case, you got 35 cents, which means you need to go up to S6 and also refund five to get down to 30. If you're at 25 and you put in 25, you're up at 50, which means S6 and you have 20 cents to refund. 
if you're at 25 and you press the orange button or the red button, nothing happens. So you're going to, you're going to stay at S5, stay at S5, no juice, no juice. Last row, 30 cents. All right, cool. So if you're at 30 cents and you put in money, you're at 30 cents and you put in money, of course, you're going to stay at 30 cents, right? Because we know that that's the cap, but you're going to have to refund the money that you put in. So if you're at 30 and you put in five, right? At 30 and you put in five, you have to refund that five. Oh, I should have done that all in pink. All right, so uh, what did we say? We said that if you're at if you're at 30 and you put in five, you have to refund five. If you're at 30 and you input 10, you're gonna have to spit out the 10. Uh, if you put in 25, you're gonna have to spit out the 25, right? Because you're already at the cap. So whatever you put in, when you're sitting at 30, when you're sitting at 30, anything you put in 5, 10, or 25 just gets returned immediately. All right, but look at these last ones. Finally, we're finally we're gonna get some juice, guys. It's gonna work out. If you're at 30 cents and you press the button, you get juice. That's an output. So what what's the juice? If you press the orange button, you get orange juice. And if you're at 30 cents and you press the red button, you get apple juice. Awesome. What about the state? Well, if you're at 30 cents and you press the orange button, you do get your orange juice, but what state do you go into? You just spent your money, right? So you just spent your money. That means you're gonna go back all the way to state zero. Same thing for the red button as zero. So this table here tells you everything about how this state machine works. It covers every possible, every possible input and every possible current state and every combination of input and current state tells you what output you go to, or sorry, what new state you go to and what uh, the machine outputs, if anything. So mostly it's nothing, but it needs to restart. Like anything over 30 gets refunded, which you see in these numbers here. And the only time it ever gives you juice is if you're sitting at 30 cents and you press the button, then you get juice, okay? So this, uh, this table here tells you everything you need to know about the, um, about the state. And organizing it like this would be a really uh, nice, or it'd be really easy to program it this way, right? Because you just write these functions f and g that simply return these values. And, uh, your your machine will work. Okay, so that's um, that's a finite state machine. Now, what else can we do with this? Well, we can also we can also um, do what we call a state, uh, what do they call it? A state diagram. So we can also put the same information in a state diagram. The state diagrams are hard to write for a big, a big state or a big finite state machine like this, but I think we'll, we'll try it. And um, if it's too ugly, then go look at the written notes. So let's try to, make a, a state diagram. Okay, so state diagrams are, you know, they're not that hard. I think they're harder to write than the tables. I like the tables better, um, but the state diagram is like, like a flow chart. Um, so what you do is you are going to um, put all your states in circles, basically. Um, we put them all in a row, or they put them all in a row when they did theirs. Um, 
I, I guess I'll do the same and hope hope it works out. Um, so let me try to draw a circle first of all. Okay, cool. Um, and then I want to duplicate this a bunch of times. So that's like S1, and this is going to be S2, and this is going to be, no, that's S, what are they? They are S0, S1, S2, A. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then I need one more, right? Not like that. Duplicate. Some. Okay. Good enough. Okay. There we go. So these are your states. So in your state diagram, you put your states here S0, S1. S2, S3, S4, S5, S6. And then what you're going to do is you're going to draw arrows between any state that can go to any other state. Um, so let me also put a number in here, right? Remember, this is 0 cents, 5, 10, 15, 20, uh, 25, 30, just, just so it's visible, make it easier for us. Um, and basically, you put an arrow between any state that can go to any other state. So, um, for example, I'm going to need a thinner line, first of all, like this. Um, if you're at zero, you can go to state one, right? Um, how do you go to state one? You would go to state one if the input is five cents. And the output would have to be what? So the input would be five cents, and what would the output be? Nothing, right? And so this is kind of this thing right here is one of the things that's kind of awkward about this is that um, so you have to label your arrows with this kind of thing. So um, the five in the five is the input and the in is the output and the arrow the arrow here is the the new state thing right the fact that you can go from s0 to s1 okay so you got to remember that the pair of numbers is input output and um, if you do that then we just need to do that for every every possible way to go from one state to another state um, so it's a little bit tedious, of course, <laughs> of course, but we can do it, right? Like, can you go from, you can go from S1 to S2. How would you do that? That would be if you put in five cents, right? Five to 10 is five cents. What would the output be? Nothing. You can go from S, what, why do you hate it when it does that? You can go from S2 to S3. That would be if you put in five cents and the output is nothing. You can go from S3 to S4. That would be if the input was five cents and the output was nothing. You can go from S4 to S5, 20 to 25. That's if the input is five and the output is nothing. You can go from 25 to 30, and that would be if you put in five and you get nothing. All right, so you have those. But that was what happens if you put in five. Actually, there's one more. If you are at S6, and you put in five, then if you're at S6 and you put in five, the output is five. So an input of five gives an output of five and you stay at S6. So you get a loop there. Um, okay. Now what happens, I think I drew all the things that happen if you put in five cents. What happens if you put in 10 cents? Well, those are gonna be more arrows, right? So. If you're sitting at S0, 0, and you put in 10, you go all the way to S2. Like that. And that would be if the input was 10 cents. And what would the output be? Nothing. All right, what if you're at S1 and you put in 10 cents? You'd go from five all the way to 15. 
So you go from here to here. That would be if you put in 10 and you get nothing. If you're at 10 and you put in 10, you'll go all the way to 20. 10, nothing. If you're at 15 and you put in 10, you go to 25. If you're at 20 and you put in 10, you go to 30. And get nothing. If you're at 25 and you put in 10, you go to 30. But you get a refund of five, right? Input, output. So if you go from 25 to 30, if you put it, if you're at 25 and you put in 10, you end up at 35, which means you have to refund five and you end up at 30. All right, so I think that's all the ones that are 10, except what happens if you go at, if you're at 30 and you put in 10. If you're at 30 and you put in 10, then you have to refund 10. Okay. So now what happens if you put in a quarter, right? We put in five cents, you put in 10 cents. Now we got to put in 25 cents. Okay. So uh, where are we going to even draw these? Uh, I think I'll draw them on the bottom, maybe. Yeah, I'll be easier. Okay. So if you're at zero and you put in 25, you're going to go all the way from S0 up to 25 cents, right? So you can go all the way from here to here. Uh, I want to draw a curve, guys. Come on. And that would be if you put in 25. And, of course, you get nothing back. Then what's next? Oh, well, you can put 25 into any of these. So if you're at five and you put in 25, you're gonna go all the way up to 30. I hate that, I hate that. So that would be if you put in 25 and you end up at 30, you don't need to output anything. All right. Now, what if you are at 10 and you put in a quarter? You end up at 30 again. But also you have to refund five because that takes you to 35. Um, all right. We got 15. You put in 25 cents. It's going to take you all the way to 30. These are getting harder to draw. Stop. Stop. Um, so that's if you put in 25, that's 25 and 15 is 40. So you'd have to refund 10, uh, 20 to 30, 20 and 25. I mean, 20 and 25, um, that would be 45, which means you need to refund 15. Then we've got 25 and you put in 25. which takes you up to 50, which means you need to refund 20. Uh, finally, if you are at 30 and you put in 25, you need to refund 25. So you get uh, one more of these, one more loop and draw a loop. Twenty-five and twenty-five. Okay, so that's what happens if you put in a quarter. So now what's left? Well, all that's left are the buttons, right? We didn't talk about the buttons. So somewhere we got to put in the buttons. Now most of the time the button doesn't do anything, right? So um, maybe I'll pick a different color just to make it visible. It doesn't. It shouldn't be a different color, but well, okay. So if it shouldn't be a different color, I'm not going to do a different color. Um, so like if you're sitting at S0 and you press the orange button, nothing happens. And something that I do like about the book's notation here is um, they say, well, if you press the red button, nothing happens. But they also say, if you press the orange button, nothing happens. So they label both of these 
on this one line rather than separate curves for each button, right? All right, so each of these needs a loop until you get to the 30 cents, right? 30 cents is the only one that can actually do anything with the button. So put a loop on each of these. Uh, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to do them in different color, otherwise it's just not gonna be visible. Uh, let's just pick light green. All right. Cause then I can go like this and R N O N. I can just put the loop wherever it fits. R N O N, right? Button doesn't do anything until you get 30 cents in the machine. So I just have a bunch of loops. R N O N. 20 cents, press the button, nothing happens. R N O N. 25 cents and you press the button. R N O N. 30 cents and you press the button. Okay, awesome. Something's gonna happen. We need we need two loops here. Um no, not loops. Actually, something does happen, right? If you're at 30 cents and you press the button, you actually go all the way back to S0. So that's actually uh -huh. Uh, where can I draw it? Down here. All the way back. So that would be if you press the orange button, then you get orange juice. And another one. If you press the red button, then you get apple juice. Now I could have just used one curve here, right? That would have been, oops. Uh, hold on. Right. Okay. Okay. That's good. Let's try and delete just that. Okay. Apple juice. Okay. Um, I could have just used one arrow there for the juice, um, just like we used one loop here, right? R N O N. Um, and I could have just said like, O O J O O J R apple juice. Um, I don't know why they, they put two lines on, um, theirs. So I put two line on it on ours. But, uh, if you're wondering why we used one here and two here, no reason. Okay. So all of that is a state diagram. And again, the hardest part is, um, well, I mean, the hardest part is just keeping everything straight in your picture, but input, output, the numbers are input, then output. And that's a state diagram. Okay. So um, that is a finite state machine. So um, what can we do about this? Um, well, I think we're at an hour and eight minutes already. So I think this is going to be it for this lecture. Uh, we're going to have a second lecture where we, um, you know, do some book problems and make some more state diagrams and tables and stuff. Um, so just one thing to let you know, um, most of the examples in the homework and the book are not seven states like this. Most of them are like three states. Okay. So don't feel like you're going to be doing a hundred problems like this or anything like that. It's just, uh, it's, it's a lot more straightforward than that. Okay. So, um, that's it for now. Talk to you guys later. Um, start your homework, not on this on graph theory and, uh, talk to you guys later.